welcome to this edition of Bayou Time, a very special Bayou Time. I'm your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker. As you can tell, we're outside here at the courthouse, downtown Homa, beautiful downtown Homa, and a very special occasion here today. You know, it's really interesting, kind of want to do a little bit of a setup for you. You know, I think that very often people who have to wait three or four seconds for their phone to come on get really frustrated. I think very often if you got to wait more than 10 seconds for your computer to boot up, you get a little aggravated. Heaven forbid we get stuck in an airport and maybe we have to wait for half an hour or 45 minutes. Or if a flight gets canceled and we have to wait an hour or two. None of those things ever in our lifetime right now can we ever understand or compare to what it's like to be detained, not only by another government, but potentially being detained as a prisoner of war. Today is National Prisoner of War Day. There are so many people that have died fighting for this country. But when it comes to prisoners of war, they dealt with and had to deal with just the ability to try to survive as they were captured and held captive by another army or another government. And very often, a lot of those people were treated so very poorly. I think sometimes we see and watch movies that give us an idea or tell us a little bit about, about what it was like, or we see the term prisoner of war. I don't know that we ever really think about what it must have been like to walk a step in their boots, much less a mile in their shoes. The people who have been a prisoner of war at any time, at any war or any conflict that has ever been uh, taken place here that we in the United States of America have been involved in are true war heroes. They are people that laid the foundation for us to be able to enjoy our life that we enjoy today. Not everybody uh, in this world has that opportunity. Today is a day for us to celebrate, a day for us to be able to honor and make sure that those people know that they have never, ever been forgotten. Today is a day for us to be able to honor and celebrate. And so in a little while, you're going to see some of the coverage here on HTV about the raising of the flag for National Prisoner of War Day as we honor these prisoners of war. And more importantly, one of the things that matters so very much, especially if you've watched HTV for some time, you know that our own Martin Falls is so very dedicated to all of the causes with, as it relates to our veterans, all of the causes as it relates to those people who have served. His own father, Mr. Eugene Falls, a decorated veteran, and God rest his soul, somebody who spent his life and his time and energy making a difference for us and our freedom because of what he did with his particular service. There's and a so, lot of people that, that have to consider that going into the service, and yet we see, talking to our recruiters all the time, so many young men and women dedicated to want to go in and serve and, and just be able to honor our country so you and I can stand here and do this. Exactly, and they don't get enough gratitude. You know, they have a, a month for this and a month for that uh, with other other things that they celebrate in this country, but our veterans get, what, one day a year? I don't, I don't believe in that, and I'm, I'm going to fight the best I can to bring more awareness to that. The people who fought for these protests and fought for people to have these rights to march and have these one-month celebrations for this and that and this and that, that's all fine that they have that, but why are none of them fighting and marching for the people who gave us these rights. I'm going to do my best to fix that. Well, Ricky, one of those people that have always been so very dedicated. You raise a huge amount of awareness. People got to follow your story as you did your ride. Uh, and it's interesting how the ride kept getting longer and longer because the cause kept getting stronger and stronger. And uh, you found your way over to D.C. And, and you're one of those people that, that don't just put up. You put up and stay up and be able to provide that. And so uh, tell us some of the things that maybe we have coming up that we can expect. It's all of the things that you do, raising awareness, especially with regards to homeless veterans. Yeah, and, and, you know, think about what it must be like for somebody who served and maybe they were captured and they became a POW, how that changes their life, as you mentioned earlier, and how maybe that changes their world when they come back. Some of those people end up homeless. I'll tell you, when I, seen, when I was on that bike ride, I was going into the homeless camps and finding these vets, and the main purpose was to look them in the eye and say, I'm doing these 1,500 miles, which became 2,400, because I want you to know I care about you and you're not forgotten, and all the people behind me care about you as well. That, after seeing that suffering, I vowed that I'm going to fight for our veterans 
as much as I can to the end of my days. And, uh, you know, that that's what pushed after the mission, my nonprofit that we got started, the 501c3. And on November 5th, my treasurer, Billy Burley, is going to have a motorcycle ride called a flag ride. They're going to go to all the old folks' homes in Lafourche and Terrebonne and go thank those veterans. And then on Veterans Day, I'm going to ride the bike 222 kilometers starting at 4 in the morning, jump off the bike, get with some veterans, rock 2.2 miles, and then kayak 2.2 miles, all in awareness for the 22 suicides that we have a day, which some of these veterans come back, they've been trapped, or they just was had bad experiences there, they come back and they can't transition back to normal life. That's why the sheriff and I are trying to open that veterans retreat, transitioning housing, because they come back and they end up in the street, and it breaks my heart. No one who fought for this country should be dying under a bridge or living in a tent. Yeah, and you mentioned Chef Tim Sonier. He's somebody that uh, is here celebrating on this day, and we're going to uh, be able to get a chance to talk with him in a little bit as well about being able to uh, partner with you and be able to be able to identify and see what the needs are of some of those people. I love the idea that you make it very unique and special. 2.2, right? 2.2 miles in bike ride. 222. 222. 222. 222 kilometers. Doing that and doing that bike ride and a kayak. And, and a kayak. Uh, and so we appreciate that very much. Ricky, thank you for fighting the fight. Thank you for joining the cause, staying with it, and helping all these people kind of jump on the cause with you. We appreciate it. The Homa Terrebonne Marine Corps League came to me about a month, month and a half ago, along with one of our board members, Mr. James LeCoin, and had asked us why we didn't have a POW flag. And I did not have a response for them. But we moved forward and I'm glad we are here today in a positive manner to respect the people that give us today our freedom. You know, I wanted to share a little bit about what it means to the flag, the POW flag. Um, I swore several in and you know, I always ask them, do you understand what it means? So I want to share a little bit with you. You know, I'll share the, I'll share the oath every military member takes. So I don't want no flashbacks or anybody running because I know we're not going to get that. I, you state your name, you do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to regulations in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So I wanted to dissect that to you a little bit and what it really means. So. I'm going to break it down so everybody understands. So the first word, I, for one, represent myself humbly, in good standing, solemnly, seriously, totally, all of me, support, I back 100% and care for, defend, I will protect at all costs. The Constitution of the United States, it's our structure, our way of life and guiding principles. Bear. I will stand and accept my responsibility. True faith, trust, confident conviction, all I am and I'm all in 100%. And allegiance, loyalty, commitment, and faithfulness. So help me God, which means I'm swearing to God, I will do what I say I'm gonna do, and I stand on those words with integrity and honor. Now, there was an addition for a military officer, and those words were obligation, responsibility, and commitment, freely, easily, without restriction, mental reservation. I commit without any doubt, evasion without any circumventing or dodging. Those words are deep, but the uniquely thing, when you dissect all of those words and put it in a sentence, so it really takes a new meaning on what our, our brothers and sisters that served out there. And I'll put it all together. I, for one, represent myself humbly in good standing, seriously, totally, all of me back 100% and care for and protect at all costs our structure, our way of life, our guiding principles, and I stand to accept with trust, confidence, and conviction. I am all in 100% with loyalty, commitment, and faithfulness, and I swear to do what I say I'll do, and I stand on those words with integrity, honor, responsibility, and commitment, and easily, without any restrictions, I commit without any doubt, without circumventing or dodging.
when, they, when our military members take the oath, that's what they're agreeing to. It's, it's hard, you, you need to remember, every guy that, swore, rose, that raised his hand agreed with a blank check up to his life and commitment. And it's important we take this day to remember that. I really appreciate y'all having me out here. May God bless every one of you. God bless America and Terrebonne Parish. Thank you. I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I stand guard majestically over institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. And when I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher, my color is a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshipped. I am loved. I am feared. I have fought in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, Guam, Okinawa, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, and the Persian Gulf, and a score of places long forgotten by all but those who were there with me. I was there. I led my soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. I followed them and watched over them. They loved me. I was on the small hill in Iwo Jima. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired, but my Marines and sailors cheered me, and I was proud. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that I have helped set free. It does not hurt, for I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country, and when it is by those I have served in battle with, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have stripped the bonds of earth, and from my vantage point on the moon, I stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space. I have been silent witness to all of America's finest hours, but my finest hour comes when I'm war torn into strips and used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle. When I fly at half mast to honor my soldiers, my airmen, my sailors, my Marines, and when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at the graveside of her fallen son or daughter, I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave, dear God, long may I wave. See, we are here outside, right in front of Chevron Parish Courthouse, uh, celebrating and honoring this very important day, Friday, uh, September the 16th, as we celebrate National Prisoner of War Day. And you can't do this without honoring some of the veterans who have done and uh, been here. As you can see to my left, uh, we have our sheriff here, Tim Saunier. Tim, thanks for being here. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right. To my right, uh, we have Cohen. We're here with Tita. And Cohen, thank you again for being here. We appreciate that. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And so, uh, Sheriff, we start with you. You know, I was talking a little earlier about all of the importance of why people need to get trained and what it is that they go through. Those of us who are not in the military, never have been, we don't really know what that's like. Tell us a little bit about some of that training and, and the honor that you guys established with your brothers whom you train and whom you go um, to the service with. Well, first, um, being in the Marine Corps, being in the Army, bringing all branches of service, it's a brotherhood that's bonded. And, you know, I, and, and, and jokingly, you know, the Marines will pick on the Army, the Army will pick on the Marines, the Navy will pick on the Marines, and we pick on one another. Right. But that's a brotherly love. Right. That's but what families do, right? That's what families do. And we are a family. Right. You know, and, and I always said it. I said, you know, we can pick on one another, but let somebody else, somebody else and, and all hell will break loose. Yeah, it's on. Because that's what we do. Right. And, uh, you know, our brothers that, you know, POWs, you know, when, when somebody signs up, they, they sign a blank check. It's either up, up to their life or whatever dedication for that cause is there. Right. And these guys that served as POWs, you know, they paid a sacrifice. They paid in blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. And it's important that we don't forget those things. 
It would, it, they paid in pain very often, and some of those people went through tremendous heartaches. We can't ever forget that, and that's why today the theme is that they will never be forgotten. But it gives you an example of resilience of our American military on what we do out there every day. Right. And they are, and we thank you for your service. We thank you for your daily service, because you. you and your team provide that, keeping us safe, all of the things that you learned in the military that you keep us safe with today in Terrible Parish, and we appreciate it. And I'm, I'm truly blessed to serve such a great parish, yeah. and I am, yeah. and I'm very blessed. Right. And it's a great way to honor you and honor those people today. We spent a little time with uh, Cohen and Tita, and this was something that was really special for you guys to do and put on. Tita was a huge part of making this take place and happen. Let's talk about how we got to that. Well, uh, Ampiku came to us and asked for a little bit of support in, uh, to help get the word out about this, about this event today. And, you know, I think it's like Chef Sonia said, it's so important because the brotherhood that we share, we can call our mamas fat, but don't let somebody else come along and do the same thing. But it's, uh, it's, it's something that is so important to everybody in this country, the families of people who were lost, killed in actions, and sometimes never recovered. Unfortunately, you know, this, this goes all the way back to World War II, Korea, Vietnam. We were fortunate to uh, have less and less of this as the, as the closer conflicts came along or closer wars, so thank goodness. But I'm just glad to be here standing side by side with you guys to celebrate this today and to honor those who need to be honored. Yeah. Uh, Tim, we'll come back to you and just kind of ask one of those things that we don't know. Um, do you have any of some of the people that maybe had gone off to war whom we lost in, in wartime and, and what it's like for you as their brother and what it's like for their family? Well, I have I've had friends that I've served with that didn't return. And, and that's that's very hard pill to swallow. But throughout that time from the brotherhood and the family, I mean, we still keep in track of a lot of our families that were still here. He was still our brother, but we always there. Yeah, and so that's such a unique thing. And I think when you spend that time and energy serving, no matter where it is you serve, whatever branch you serve, it's about a dedication and a commitment. And that's really interesting. Y'all have commit, kept that commitment to those families. And, and it is. And, you know, when I retired, people asked me if I would miss the Marine Corps. And the honest answer, it's not the name of the Marine Corps, it's the people that serving to the left or right of you, that what makes it. And that's good Americans that serve in a cause higher than themselves. And any person that you can surround yourself that's willing to serve higher cause than yourself, you can do great things. And that's why our country's where we are. That's why we're the land of the free. We're the that's land right. of the three because of what's been done exactly by people right. before us and those who have served. And I love the fact that y'all have that contact that commitment that stays with some of those people uh, who, who have given the ultimate sacrifice in losing and, their life. And those guys that pay that sacrifice, they have paved the way for the future and continue to pave the way for our future military and for our country. Yeah, and it's just a really, really special day as I stand here with Cohen and, and uh, Sheriff Tim. As we talk a little bit about the value of that, got about 30 seconds left. Uh, Cohen, just some final thoughts about the importance of this day and what Tita brought to this. We should all remember as, as uh, countrymen the importance of the lives and the sacrifice that was given by the people who came way before us. And we need to keep the same patriotism that we had on September 12th of 2001 when this country came together and really respected law enforcement, fire, and military, and, and all who serve. And we need to have that, we need to recall that patriotism every day. You know, it's a really, really good point, and I appreciate both of you very much for standing here and sharing a little time with me. You remind me of what we need to remind everyone, that September 11th was a very, very important day. We celebrated it uh, just a few days ago. Cohen makes a great point. We should treat every day like it was September 12th, as we should never, ever forget. We want to make sure that those prisoner of wars or national prisoner of war day know that they are never forgotten. Like Sheriff Tim said, their families are never forgotten. The Brotherhood, make sure they take care of that. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. That will do it for this particular segment of Bayou Time. Don't go anywhere. A lot more local programming here on HTV.